Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video on the Viking Gnome Anime channel. I apologize again for the really recent delay, but for the new season, I am fully back to making daily content, and we are going to start out with the first episode of, uh, Am I Actually the Strongest? The One of the first anime airing this season, maybe the second or third, and the first isekai of the season. And, uh, wow, this was, uh, this was uh, a first episode. It definitely was. I mean... I knew from the trailers it was going to be a bit more on the humoristic side, but uh, damn, I did not expect it to be this entertaining right from the get-go in the first episode. So to quickly recap here, we have this shut-in neat. He he dies, of course, to being reincarnated, but there is no truck coon this time. There is no train coon. There is no bus coon. There is no coon at all. He just dies in bed from hunger. Who knows? But he dies in bed, gets reincarnated, and uh, we, we see the goddess, and she's just like very straight up. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to give you, you know, you've been selected to be reincarnated. I'm just going to give you the most OP skills I can think of and throw you in here to a new life. Hope you enjoy. It's like, okay, very simple, straightforward. He's just very, very right on with it. So he gets reincarnated. Before he gets reincarnated, though, I did love the, uh, how the, <laughs> the, uh, the animators, you know, do the boob jiggle for the goddess every, like, five seconds in that first interaction scene. And they also add in a jiggle effect, sound effect, as they do that. It's like, god damn. You didn't have to do that, man. But okay, but okay. I'm, I'm here for it. Okay. I accept, I accept. So, he gets reincarnated into this royal family in the other world. And I suppose he is the firstborn child of this king and queen, and you know, apparently the... The queen was like super strong, defeated the demon king, whatever, before. And the king, of course, being strong as well, I suppose. And they're like so ecstatic that they finally have a prince and the son. And they're gonna like check his magic level. But it says it's like only level 2. Which is horribly low in this world. They were thinking it was gonna be like 40 or 50 or something, right? And uh, since they think he has no powers, or no like nothing at all. They basically just decide, yeah, he died in childbirth, by the way. He, uh... He just died in childbirth. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So they throw him out into the woods to die because he seemed way too weak to actually be part of the royal family, right? And it's like, just from the get-go there, it's like, yep, no cushy life for you. Straight into straight into hardship from the get-go. And uh, yeah, he is still a baby in the forest and he only has barrier magic apparently because the goddess, as we find out later, actually forgot to give him any sort of element, which, well, ditzy goddess, by the way. Too much uh, IQ went into those uh, bajonkers instead of her brain, but you know it happens. So, uh, so yeah, so he just learns barrier magic on the on the go there as he's in the woods. A Fenrir shows up to eat him, but the barrier keeps him safe, and basically he just slaps the Fenrir around, throwing trees at her and whatever else. And uh, he by accident names the Fenrir, and uh, she turns into a hot anime girl because of course. And, you know, he, because he, he explains to the Fenrir that, you know, okay, you're like my, sort of my bonded uh, companion now, but I need milk, I'm starving, right? Because he's, he's a baby still. And uh, the demon uh, Fenrir wolf thing just thinks, okay, I know how to solve this. I've seen this in movies, okay? And then just uh, turns into a human to uh, basically be able to give breast milk, right? And then she states, and I quote, okay, to... To give breast milk, I you know I have to be pregnant first, right? So I need you to fill me with your seed. Hold up, what? Hold up, hold up, hold up now, ma'am. Uh, he's a baby, so I think we have issues on that front. And uh, just hold up, that's that escalated very quickly. All right, that escalated very very quickly. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, so yeah, she asks him, uh, the baby, to fill her with his seed, which doesn't happen. Uh, but yeah, you know, that would have been <clears throat> interesting to see. And maybe in the hentai version, that will <laughs> that will happen. Oh god, no. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we go on from there, where thankfully the uh, like a relative of the king, like a kind-hearted. Margrave of some sort comes to the forest to rescue him. No idea how he knew where he was being put by the royal family, but I, mean, I guess he has some connections. So he is intercepted by a flay 
I think her name is, the Fenrir. That, that is now a hot anime girl. Uh, and he says that, yeah, I want to save him because you know, my firstborn son died. And uh, I want to just let every baby and every child have a life, right? Have a chance to, to live, live life, even though they may be weak. So then, you know, he gets adopted. And uh, is it Horuto his name is? I actually forgot his name. Something along those lines. Haruto, something, something along those lines. So, so yeah, so th then it gets adopted, and uh, we get into the uh, nine-year time skip. So now he's not nine years old, around there, and uh, you know he's in this Margaret family with the uh, dad, mom, and little sister. And yeah, then basically we just we do some more humor, some sword training, stuff like that, and we end off the first episode. Now, overall, I think the the anime so far it's very entertaining, you know. It's far from the deepest plot-wise, but, uh, well, maybe the bustiest plot-wise, if you know what I mean. But yeah, it's far from the deepest, meaningful show so far, but it's definitely going to be more of a comedy show. One comment I saw from another reviewer, which I quite agree with, is that this show plays with, with a lot of humoristic elements that can easily put it into the parody category of Isekai, like, Isekai parody shows. But it doesn't really let itself get in there. Like, it teases with those elements, but it still doesn't feel like a parody at all. It still feels like a more, like, fleshed-out uh, isekai show, for sure. It's, I mean, for me, for my own taste, I love just perverted, etchy humor and being over-the-top and stupid with it. And this first episode has a ton of that, for sure, which I really, really quite enjoyed. I mean, just, like, having those crazy, having those over-the-top scenes, I mean, the exemplary one being the if you'll fill me with your seed <coughs> scene, it's just... It really hits the spot for me, and really makes me just chuckle to myself and laugh and smile, and really enjoy the first episode. I have a lot of hopes for what the show can do moving forward. I do think that his magic capability is interesting. As I stated, he was born like super overpowered, like level 1002, but the world only measures in triple digits, and the uh, highest human being ever was measured in uh, at 77. So you know, obviously he is insanely, stupidly overpowered. But, but yeah, but he only has barrier magic because he has no element because the goddess forgot to give it to him, or give any to him, as was, as I stated before. So, he just has his barrier magic, and he does a lot of interesting things with his barrier magic in the first episode. Like, using it to be able to talk, like, putting it into, like, his throat and stuff to emulate sound when he's a baby. Using it to protect himself, using it as, like, a walkie-talkie. I mean, he has a lot of different utilizations for the barrier magic. It seems like a very versatile sort of magic system even though he is limited to only using barrier magic. I'm not sure what the limitations are on that, or how that's going to develop, but I do have hope that they would actually spend some time fleshing out the barrier magic system, and what it can actually do with it, since it has like, insane amounts of mana and, and magic and stuff. So yeah, I mean, I, I do hope that they will do something with that, because they've shown in the first episode that they have some, have some imagination and ingenuity in how he can use this, right? So I do hope they actually capitalize on that, to make a lot of interesting sort of magic-esque systems and uh, spells and such, and just figure out a way to make him traverse the world in a way that's not too obvious or too boring, but interesting. I th and I think they will do that fairly well. The art style as well, I thought was overall nice. It's a bit unique, uh, but flowed really, really well. So art, art style for me, definitely a W. Now, otherwise, outside of that, I did also, there was also the very end point to the episode, where the the father or the adopted father, uh, after he after Haruto whatever shows his skill with the sword, obviously being that he has a lot of power and that that he dodged something he shouldn't be able to dodge with his power level, the adopted father believes that you know, maybe he's like a returned demon because there's been some mixing with bloodlines in the royal family. You know, someone banged someone. You know what I mean? In the past, so he might have some sort of demon esque capabilities because of that, or some sort of like demon DNA. Uh, because that can happen sometimes, but who knows? And that the royal insignia that every like royal gets on their chest or on their body, I guess, might have some hidden powers we don't know about yet. So a lot of sort of intrigue in that aspect as well. Like, okay, what is going on with this? And we'll get some more info on that in future episodes, I am sure. But yeah, it definitely seems like a very it's more lighthearted, simple show, and I don't think it's going to be overly complex. I don't think it's going to be anything you know you can really think about too much, but. It's interesting, it's very funny, and uh, yeah, it's just very enjoyable so far, very enjoyable. Like, if you enjoy Isekai, I would for sure watch this right away, it's very nice. If you like sort of humor, etchy, stuff like that, I will definitely watch it as well. 
if you just like like a good laugh in general, I would definitely watch this. It's just as much a comedy so far as Nisekai, I would say, and it mixes the elements quite well in the first episode. So I do have high hopes. Hopefully, I will not be disappointed. Whew. That being said, I have to go edit this video now, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.